Hi, and welcome to another sysadmin tutorials video. Today we'll be looking at Windows Server 8 beta preview. So this morning I've uh, downloaded the ISO image off uh, our MSDN and uh, currently I've mounted it in VMware Workstation 8, uh, allocated two CPUs and allocated also four gigabytes of RAM. So we're just booting it up at the moment. And with Windows Server 8, you're going to notice a lot of graphical changes once we get through with the installation. So here, uh, just like with all the other installations, you can select uh, your language and your time and currency format. So because uh, we're in Australia, we're going to be selecting English Australia. Be clicking Next and Install Now. All right, so I've got two options here with the beta ISO image. Uh, I can do a server core installation or I can do a server with the GUI, which is a standard installation. So what I'm going to be doing is the uh, the GUI version. So I've selected that. I'm going to click Next. And uh, license terms I will accept. Click Next. Now I'm not going to be doing any upgrades, so I'm going to be clicking here on Install Windows Only. And this is the hard drive that I've allocated so far. It's a 20 gigabyte uh, drive, uh, unformatted. So um, you can go through the drive options and partition it and create the format yourself. But uh, I'm just going to let the installer run the defaults. So I'm just going to click Next on that. And the installation is on its way. So what I'm going to do is pause the video here and uh, we'll come back when this installation is finished. Okay, and so the installation is complete. So the server has rebooted itself. And we'll just wait for it to come up to the first screen which should be asking me to change my password and so here we go we've got uh, the default username as administrator and here I will uh, enter my password And if you notice, just on the right-hand side of the password, uh, you can see this little dot with a curved line at the top. If I click on this, it's a kind of a, it looks like an eye. If I click on this, it's going to reveal my password. So if I hold it down, that's the password that I've put in. And release it, it's gone back again. So let's click uh, Finish. It'll finalize the settings and boot me into Windows. So here we are at the Control alt delete screen. Uh, as you can see, completely different to Windows 2008. Um, so let me press Control alt delete here. I enter in my password. And as you can see, the little eye is here again, so I can uh, click on it, reveal it, and so on. So let's enter in. And go through the personalized settings. And it's going to load straight into the Server Manager dashboard. So I'm going to um, just give you five seconds to see if you can see what is being taken out as opposed to Windows 2008. And it was the one of the first things that I noticed as it loaded up. So what it is, is they've uh, removed the Start button. So yes, that's right, no more Start button. So um, how do I move around, you ask? I can press the start button on my keyboard and I go into start. So I have my options here, server manager, PowerShell, task manager, computer, control panel, Internet Explorer. In uh, server 8 it will come with Internet Explorer 10. So this is the um, IE 10 uh, beta preview. And then I can uh, simply go back to my desktop as well. Uh, one thing I want to show you, I don't want to just make this a boring Windows Server 8 installation. So um, one really cool graphical change that they've done as well is in Task Manager. So if I fire that up and click on More Details, you can see here I've got my apps, background processes, Windows processes, and in two columns the CPU and the memory usage of all those. So that looks quite nice. But if I go into the performance tab, I've actually got an even nicer graph here. 
So this uh, CPU graph at the moment is showing both CPUs. If I right click on it, I can uh, change the graph and show the logical processes. So I've got two logical processes assigned here. And uh, as you can see, it splits them into two, CPU 0, CPU 1. Um, and I can also turn on the kernel times, and that will be graphed as well. And I'll just show you quickly memory, memory usage graph. So there's all the information that you need here about memory. And we've also got the Ethernet graph. So that's look, looking pretty good, I must say. And we've got uh, the users that have logged on. So at the moment, just administrator, what processes or applications I've got running, CPU and memory that's being used, the overall processes that are running in uh, my Windows Server 8, and the services, which is pretty standard, pretty similar to Windows 2008. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to open up my server manager again. And what I want to do is I want to click on local server. And in here, I'm just going to change my server name. So this is pretty much the same as Windows 2008. So I'm just going to name it server. Uh, it'll be part of the work group. Click OK. Uh, yes, close. Uh, will not restart yet. We can go through, we can configure Windows Update. So I'll let me choose my settings. This is pretty standard, pretty similar to 2008. So I'll select check for updates, but let me choose whether to download and install them. And I'll click OK here. And it'll go through and check for updates. I'm going to close that now. I don't really want it to do it at the moment. The other thing we might want to do is enable remote desktop. So I'm going to click next to remote desktop here uh, and turn on remote desktop. A firewall exception will be automatically created for you. I'll click OK, apply, OK. So what I'm going to do now is reboot my server. Now there's a newer way to reboot your server. So in my server manager, I'm going to click on all servers. This is the server that I've got online at the moment, which is my local host. And it's got the original server name there. It hasn't updated yet. So I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to click on restart server and it's going to go and reboot. Uh, yes, I am sure. And here we are back at the control alt delete screen. As you can see, the reboot is actually quite fast. So let's log in again. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to make this server a domain controller. So I'm going to add the role. So I'll click next. So we've got two options here. We've got the role-based or feature-based installation, which is similar to Windows 2008, uh, just that it's in a different GUI. And we've also got remote desktop services scenario-based. So any remote desktop, virtual desktop infrastructure that we want to install, we would select that option. However, we were going to install the Active Directory role. So I'll have role based selected and click next. So this is the server. As you can see, it's updated its name to server. This is the IP address that's been picked up by DHCP. Before I actually configure Active Directory, I will go in and set a static IP. But for now, just to install the roles, that's fine. So I'm going to click next. OK, and here I'm going to be selecting the Active Directory domain services. And as soon as I click on that, it's going to add all the additional required roles and we want to in include all the management tools as well so I'm going to click add features and I'm going to click next now here in the features you can see there's quite a lot of extra features as opposed to Windows 2008 you'll be able to have a play around with these when you run up your Windows Server 8 so let's click next gives you some information about the Active Directory domain services I'll click next and just a confirmation of what's going to be installed, the role and the features. So I'm happy with all that. I will click install. And the installation is on its way. Okay, the installation is successful. So I'll click close. Now before we configure domain services, what I'll do is I'm just going to go in and configure a static IP address on my Ethernet adapter. I'm just going to go into TCP IP and I'm just going to give it 192.168.1.100 and 
subnet default gateway is 1.1 and at the moment the DNS is also 1.1 so as you'll see when we go through the domain services installation or configuration the primary DNS like in Windows 2008 gets changed to the local host so I'll click OK close this so we've installed the role what we can do is just click up on here in the notification area and as you can see server role is successful and the features have been all installed so now, after that, let's promote this server to a domain controller. So I'll click on this link, and it's going to load up this GUI. And because this is the first domain controller, I'm going to select Add a New Forest. And the root domain will give us windowslab.local, and I'll click Next. So it's going to go out and search for windowslab.local to see if it exists. Now, as you can see, we've got the forest functional level and the domain functional level. We can see 2003, 2008, 2008 R2, and then the new one, Windows Server 8. Of course, it says beta because this is a beta version. Uh, this server will be a D DNS server and a global catalog. And directory services restore mode, we'll give that a password. And click next. Uh, we don't need to create DNS delegation because our windowslab.local domain does not exist. So I'll click next on this. The NetBIOS domain name is going to get pre-populated. We should say Windows Lab. And there we have it. Click next. Here are the default paths for the database folder, log files folder and sysfol folder. I won't be changing them. I'll be keeping them as defaults. I'll click next here. And here's a review of your installation. So if you're happy with all of this, click Next. The installation wizard will go through and do a prerequisites check. Make sure that your server is OK for domain services. There is a warning next to al allow cryptography algorithms compatible with Windows NT4 that prevents weaker cryptography algorithms when establishing security channel sessions. So we can, we can disable that, but for this demo I'm going to leave it. And a delegation for this DNS server cannot be created because the authority of parent zone cannot be found, which is correct because I've just made up that domain of windowslab.local. Uh, other than that, prerequisite checks completed and uh, passed successfully. So if we click install, we'll go through and start our installation. Okay, the installation is completed. Computer is going to be restarted. We go, it restarts itself. Now, our server's been rebooted. We've just installed Active Directory services. So I'll click uh, Control Alt Delete, sign in. So now I'm going to just enter in my password here. As you can see, I'm logging in as Windows Lab slash administrator. So let's go straight in. And if we scroll down here, we can see the roles and services that have been installed. So we've got Active Directory Domain Services and we've got DNS. So now we want to manage Active Directory. So we'll click on ADDS on the left-hand side here. And here's the server with the domain services that has been installed. So we'll right-click this. Now this is like previously clicking on Start, Administrative Tools, and having a look at all the tools available. So these are the tools we have available on our local server. So we have the Active Directory Administrative Center, but then we also have the Active Directory Users and Computers. So I'll just show you the Active Directory Administrative Center. I'll just close this notification to make more room. So here we've got some windows. We can reset the password of a user quite easily without actually drilling down or clicking or right-clicking on the domain and going find. Um, or we can actually do a global search of the whole directory here. But here is our uh, domain, Windows Lab. So on the right hand side you'll see all the folders and organizational units. So we can actually click on the little arrow here and also drill down via this way. And once we click on that we'll see all the users in our folder. So basically what we'll do is we'll minimize that now and we'll just have a quick look in DNS as well. So we have our server here. So we'll go into DNS Manager and 
We have our server, we have our forward lookup zones with our domain windows lab.local. We'll uh, still have to create reverse uh, lookup zone here, which we can do by going new zone, next, create a primary zone, all DNS servers running on domain controllers, um, IPv4 reverse lookup zone, and here we'll enter our subnet, which is 192.168.1, it's a slash 24. So we'll click next. Uh, we'll allow secure dynamic updates next and we'll finish that and so here we'll have our reverse lookup zone so if you don't know the reverse lookup zone if we want to resolve an IP address to a name we can do a ping minus a with the IP address it'll query DNS it'll hit the reverse lookup zone look for the IP address and match that IP address to the host so that's uh, DNS manager in a quick 30 second run through now one last thing I wanted to show you before ending this video is if I click on the start button on my keyboard I'm going to go into the start menu from here I can actually just start typing say if I want to even though control panel is on the screen there if it was not on the screen if I just type control panel this automatically pops up and I don't know about you but to me this looks quite similar to the Apple Spotlight um, or you may also think that it's uh, exactly the same as Windows 2008 or Windows 7 search at the start menu. So anyway, once it's found the application, uh, you can just click on it on the left hand side here and your control panel opens up with all your applications. So that wraps up the, this video on Windows Server 8 Beta Edition. So thank you very much for watching. And please head on over to www.sysadmintutorials.com for many more wonderful tutorials. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.